presentation will bring back Dr. Cinda Crawford. Uh, you've, well, she was introduced earlier. She's one of the faculty members at the University of Florida's Shelter Medicine Program. She's a graduate of UF and has a PhD in infectious diseases and immunology. And a lot of her studies and responses are related to the recognition and treatment of shelter dogs with infectious disease issues. And she is going to talk today about a new virus that is being discussed a lot in the past few months and help us understand what we know and don't know about the circovirus. Welcome, Dr. Crawford. virus has barely been born and it's already being greatly abused and mal-aligned in the media um, in the uh, past few months. So that's Brutus. He's in a, uh, an emergency hospital uh, with abdominal pain and pneumonia and he's peering through his cage in isolation as he's being treated for suspected circovirus. So this was in uh, an Ann Arbor, Michigan uh, news uh, service uh, dated October 3rd. So we're going to talk about all the cases like Brutus and uh, see if we can determine if this is really um, circovirus uh, causing um, all the recent rashes of ill dogs and deaths. So, have you all seen these headlines? I mean, it's everywhere from CNN to um, veterinary publications to all sorts of media outlets. Uh, virus linked to illness that has sickened several Ohio dogs. This date is September 6th, just one of hundreds of headlines that are similar. And then most recently, uh, the situation in Michigan, Ann Arbor veterinarian sounds alarm, circovirus suspected in dog deaths, dated October 3rd. So we've all seen these, uh, these reports. It's causing a lot of hysteria um, uh, for dog owners and veterinarians uh, right now. So they've implicated canine circovirus. What is this? Um, I imagine most everyone in the audience has not heard about it other than through uh, media reports, and that's because it is a very brand new uh, virus discovered in dogs in uh, 2012. And this is the publication in the veterinary media, uh, veterinary um, uh, literature about the discovery of circovirus in tissues of dogs with vasculitis and hemorrhage. Uh, that was published um, in April of this year in Emerging Infectious Diseases, and the lead author is Dr. Patty Pesavento, who is a pathologist at the University of California Davis Veterinary School. She also is a passionate um, pathologist for shelter uh, infectious diseases. So that's, that's her true love and what she loves to work on most of the time. And so she's affiliated with uh, Dr. Kate Hurley at the Corette Shelter Medicine Program. What is circovirus? It's somewhat, it's not related to, but it's a virus that's built like canine parvovirus. It's a small DNA virus that doesn't have an envelope. It's unenveloped. So just like parvovirus, it's very resistant to most disinfectants and survives well in the environment outside of the host uh, body. Um, uh, up until last year, it was known to only infect a large variety of birds and only one mammalian species, and that's the pig. And in the pig, it's called porcine circovirus 2. This virus is responsible for a lot of economic losses for the swine industry, not only in this country, but globally. In pigs, this virus causes pneumonia, enteritis, nephritis, vasculitis, granulomatous, lymphadenitis, and an overall general wasting syndrome. And it is, uh, has a high mortality rate. However, it typically does not cause disease in pigs in and of itself. It is a uh, co-pathogen, um, and when it is diagnosed in pigs, the pigs are also co-infected with other viral and bacterial pathogens 
that probably initiated illness to begin with, and then the Circa virus came in as um, a secondary player uh, and caused much more severe and lethal disease. It is transmitted at least in pigs and in birds by fecal oral transmission. So it's in the intestinal tract, it's shed in the feces, and then it's transmitted to susceptible birds or pigs uh, through uh, fecal exposure to, uh, oral exposure to fecal uh, contaminated um, objects. What, how about canine circovirus? So this is the second mammalian species known to be have a, a circovirus infection. Um, the circovirus discovered in dogs last year is unique to the dog and it's called dog CV. It's a dog circovirus. So that's the abbreviation that's been accepted by virologists. Uh, if, by, based on molecular analyses, the dog circovirus is very closely related to the pig circovirus. So at some point in time, there may have been some infection of dogs from pigs, and then the pig virus gradually adapted to dogs to become um, more unique to the dog. Um, the, the sentinel case or index case uh, that the virus was first discovered in was a one-year-old beagle mix dog that presented to UC Davis's Veterinary Medical Teaching Hospital with the signalment of acute progressive hemorrhagic gastroenteritis after spending three weeks in a boarding kennel. Uh, several uh, diagnostic tests were done on this dog and um, there was no evidence for infection by parvovirus, distempervirus, canine enteric coronavirus, all the bacterial uh, gastrointestinal pathogens and their toxins and then um, uh, Giardia cryptosporidium. So basically they could not find what was causing this rapidly progressive uh, severe hemorrhagic gastroenteritis in this particular dog. Uh, because the, the dog was um, 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 progressively um, getting worse, the owner did elect euthanasia. Fortunately, because Dr. Pesavento was the pathologist assigned to uh, the necropsy of this dog, um, I think it's because of her hookup with this particular case that we actually uh, now know about canine circovirus. Uh, she performed the postmortem exam um, and um, noted vasculitis, vascular necrosis, thrombosis, and hemorrhage not only in the GI tract, accounting for the presentation of uh, severe hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, but also in the liver, spleen, kidneys, and lungs. The mesenteric lymph nodes were characterized as having granulomatous lymphadenitis, and the actual virus was detected using PCR technology in the liver, spleen, and lymph nodes of this index case. And Dr. Pesavento has provided some um, uh, tish, uh, pictures of the uh, tissues that were so severely affected in this first case of canine circovirus. And in this panel, we have uh, the entire uh, gastrointestinal tract with the stomach here and uh, the descending colon here. And you can see all of the hemorrhage on the cerebral surfaces of the stomach and in the omentum and also the uh, color of the small intestines here indicating um, perfusion problems. And this is a, uh, um, an up-close uh, picture of the uh, lining of the stomach, um, inside lining of the stomach with all the petechial uh, hemorrhaging from the vasculitis and vascular necrosis. And here are the kidneys from this dog. Um, and so the kidneys are also severely affected with vasculitis leading to hemorrhage and infarcts. The infarcts are all the um, areas uh, where hemorrhage is occurring. Um, so there was a severe uh, nephritis in this dog also. In addition uh, to finding uh, circovirus in this index case, um, 
there was an attempt to determine if this was just a one-off finding uh, that would not be found in other dogs, it was just this individual dog, or is it something that actually has been infecting dogs and uh, it's just not been uh, noted before. So Dr. Pesavento examined um, tissues from 21 necropsy cases that uh, she had archived and she picked these 21 cases because they all had hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, vasculitis, and granulomatous lymphadenitis on postmortem exam, just like the index dog, the one, uh, the one-year-old beagle mix. And she tested these uh, tissues with PCR specific for dog uh, circovirus, also looked for the proteins from dog circovirus uh, in the tissues using immunohistochemistry, and then took it one step further with yet a third test by looking for the uh, DNA of the dog virus actually in the, in the cells, the uh, cells in the tissues using in situ hybridization. And using these three different uh, probes for uh, circovirus, she detected it in 10 of the 21 cases. And here is a chart uh, that she provided uh, to me also, and that she presented at the International Society for uh, Companion Animal Infectious Disease Conference last year. Um, so there are the 10 cases with the signalment, different age dogs, female, male, uh, different breeds. Um, the affected tissues that were tested, and remember all of these dogs had vasculitis, or hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, or some sort of granulomatous lymphadenitis. And um, these uh, pathogenic processes were determined in the, all these different tissues for these cases. And look at, it's not just GI, kidney, spleen, lung, lymph nodes. Look at the dogs that they had vasculitis affecting the brain. So there was bleeding in the brain from vasculitis. Uh, there was vasculitis uh, leading to um, skin abnormalities. Uh, so various different organ systems. And um, this is the result of the three testing methods on each of these cases. So based on these 10 additional cases where circovirus was detected by three, using three different methods, her definition for canine circovirus is a dog with tissue level evidence of vasculitis, hemorrhagic enteritis, nephritis, pneumonia, all associated with, uh, with a vasculitis um, um, cause, and then uh, granulomatous lymphadenitis. And the tissues have to be positive on at least two of the three different testing mechanisms. So she's using a pretty rigorous case definition. Unfortunately, it requires tissues acquired from dogs that have uh, either died or been euthanized because of their disease. But it's the most rigorous definition we have for a, a dog uh, circovirus case to date. She went a step further and screened fecal samples from different cohorts of dogs for the circovirus using PCR. She found that in of, of 204 fecal samples from uh, normal dogs that with normal feces, 7% had circovirus detected. And when she looked at diarrheic samples from dogs with gastroenteritis, um, she uh, found that in 11% of the, those samples. So there's no, there was no difference between the number of normal dogs with circovirus in their feces and dogs with diarrhea due to gastroenteritis. And in addition, uh, for the dogs that had diarrhea that also had, um, uh, that she found circovirus in, most of them were co-infected with some other gastrointestinal pathogen. 
And lastly, she did detect another strain of canine circovirus in a fecal sample from a California shelter dog that um, uh, had vomiting and diarrhea. So what does all this mean? Well, we don't know, and, and, and she is the expert, um, she does not know the role of circovirus in the pathogenesis of disease in dogs. Still remains to be determined. It likely is going to require experimental infection studies. She's not willing to do that, so she wants to determine the role using natural, um, naturally infected dogs. Um, it can contribute to illness and death. We don't know if it's either by itself or is it like the pig circovirus, and it requires some initiating infectious event uh, uh, for circovirus to come in and play a role. We don't know. And her phrase is, is this virus causal or is it casual? I love that, that phrase. It means does it actually cause disease in and of itself or is it a casual sort of opportunistic pathogen? She does feel that um, we should uh, think of dog circovirus in cases of unexplained vasculitis, hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, or granulomatous lymphadenitis. Unexplained. That means that someone has gone uh, and uh, ruled out all the common causes of these diseases first. So what about the Ohio cases that occurred in September, August and September of this year? 19 dogs that had hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, weight loss, lethargy. The vets reported, working on these dogs, reported that clinical signs seemed to be related to vasculitis. I don't know how they determined that the dogs had vasculitis. Four dogs died. One of the dogs that died and 36 fecal samples were submitted to Dr. Pesavento for testing for circovirus. She found circovirus in the tissues of that one dog that she received and two fecal samples out of 36. So would you say that the media reports were correct and that circovirus was the cause of all the illness and deaths in this uh, population of 19 dogs? So um, I think after um, all the testing was completed and very few positive samples found, the Ohio Department of Agriculture stated, at this point, we feel that circovirus was not the primary contributing factor that made the Ohio dogs sick. Just not enough evidence. There's no epidemiological links, and they're looking for other causes right now. What about the Michigan cases that are occurring right now? And so this has come to media attention because of a, vet a veterinarian in Ann Arbor who uh, is reporting that she's treating 20 to 30 dogs a week with hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, abdominal pain, and interstitial pneumonia. She further reported that she's seen hundreds of these cases since last year. This is all in the media. She has even done exploratory laparotomy surgeries on dogs that were having severe abdominal pain to see why they were so painful in the abdomen. And she found greatly enlarged lymph nodes, lymphadenitis, constricted blood vessels, could be part of a vascular necrosis, and severe liver and pancreas abscesses. Six of her patients have died. And the, the, none of them have been, uh, there's been no necropsy results uh, reported for any of them. Um, she claims that she's seeing similar disease signs in cats, rabbits, and one swan she's treated. In addition, she, she reports that both she and her staff became sick with some signs similar to those of the dogs while they were treating the dogs. And furthermore, for every case she has seen in dogs, she, the dog's owner had flu-like illness the week before. So this is what's in the media. So what has happened? Well, the Diagnostic Center for Population and Animal Health at Michigan State's Veterinary School has only confirmed uh, two dogs out of numerous ones tested um, uh, that this veterinarian has uh, reported as cases and uh, two tested positive for circovirus. But these two dogs also 
were infected with other multiple gastrointestinal pathogens. So no one is willing to say that circovirus is the cause of the illness. So Dr. Pesavento does have a sheltered dog project she wants to start. And she wants to know, are sheltered dogs at greater risk for infection with dog circovirus compared to pets in homes? seeing that we, our shelter dogs frequently come in with concurrent gastrointestinal um, um, parasites and um, other uh, pathogen infections. So um, she would like to test fecal samples from shelter dogs for a circovirus only in, in if they have hemorrhagic diarrhea, but only if they have been adequately treated with dewormers for GI parasites no parasite eggs seen on fecal examination, the dog's hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, two negative canine parvovirus antigen tests, and the diarrhea has been submitted to IDEX for the canine diarrhea PCR panel and has come back negative for all the pathogens that, um, um, GI pathogens that panel tests for. So those are her criteria for testing uh, fecal samples from shelter dogs with hemorrhagic diarrhea. So if you have some dogs that meet these criteria, she would love to hear from you. And she asked me to pass along her email address, and you can contact her directly by email, and um, ha she'll have a discussion with you and tell you how to submit samples um, uh, for testing. All right, thank you very much.